Well, it's been months, but the mod collection finally posted something I had to buy. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. There were a lot of cool things this week, but one of them spoke to me the most, and I ended up buying it, so we'll see it reviewed and documented. But I want you to leave your guess down in the comments section below after you've seen all the offerings. Starting off our journey today is a Les Paul classic in what they called Midnight Roadster. I'd say that's a pretty sweet finish. It really reminds me of the Les Paul Scorpion series, just without the trans finish and the flame top underneath. But you've got kind of like a a purple and gold, you know, racer hot rod stripe thing going on, but the cream binding, oh man, that just looks so awesome with this guitar. You've got your creamy zebra pickups, golden knobs, I mean, everything about that's a win. But then you flip it over to the back and yes, <laughs> they did it on the back too. That's always my biggest thing. I like it when they do the entire guitar something special. They inadvertently made this look like a five piece maple neck at the same time too. But no, that's just a painted on stripe head design. They definitely wanted a premium for it at 3100 And wow, surprisingly, it's still there. I mean, I know it's a little bit expensive, but they worked hard on that one. I think that's still a fair value. Next, we had a mysterious Pelham Blue Burst. So this kind of reminds me of my Danny Phantom Go and Ghost Les Paul custom. Except for this time, it's a little bit more of a darker blue burst and you don't have the whole widowed effect. And then on top of it, this is a satin finish. But this is one of those cases where it's like, you know, I think the satin finish kind of complements this color set. They completely blacked out all the hardware and plastics. But the pickups are extra special. None of that 490, 498 T-series stuff. It's T-type neck pickup, all right an uncovered burst bucker 61T. It kinda looks like it has a blue headstock, but I think that's just the mother of pearl reflecting because it looks way less blue in this photo. And they also did the back, they did the neck, they did the headstock. Serial number seems to date it to 2019, but hey, look at that, locking Grover tuners, that's a cool upgrade. And looking at our edges, sure we got a little bit of a ding right here, but we can tell they also bursted the edge. The only thing this thing's missing is a volute, and sadly they gave it a Gibson USA case. What's up with that come on it's a custom shop guitar and all at a modest 4500 that's a 500 dollars discount for all those cool customizations next up another trini lopez model we saw one in the demo shop last week and now it's like we just see them everywhere but this time they did this in a custom finish red berry sparkle which to be honest you see sparkly red trinis all the time i mean yeah this one's a little bit different maybe it looks better in person but i didn't get too excited over this one but it does look nice now had they done like a red burst and had black black edges on it, then I would get excited. However, there's a pretty sizable defect in the finish on that one. I, it would bug me too much to own that and be able to see that reflection occasionally. Next up is a Tasty 50 standard in Melted Penny. This vaguely reminds me of their cosmic paint jobs, but this time it's like, you know, more copper in color. So it's like melted splatter paint, copper stuff going on, aged gold hardware, ambered out knobs. It's pretty nice. It also reminds me of some of the Georges St. Pierre guitars that we talked about in this episode, but sadly no melted swirl finish on the neck and back. But you did get the imperial tips and a sweet government green case. Man, they must have so many of those. <laughs> For only a couple hundred dollar premium, yeah, I think that was a fair deal. But wait till you see this. So Firebird Custom, $6,100, which I'll be honest, I'm not surprised this hasn't sold yet. But look what they did here. They painted the pick guard. Normally we've got a little Firebird dude right here, right? But now they moved it down here. So you've got like, you know, Phoenix, Firebird, Sun, weird stuff going on. The Ray's moving up the instrument. That's awesome. But I don't think it's worth like the $2,000 premium over the other ones that they're always posting and having a hard time selling. Right here, $3,400 for the exact same thing, just without the custom paint on the front. So it's cool, just not double price cool. Maybe they could have redeemed it by doing something special on the back. So I suspect that one is gonna sit for a while. Another good deal this week at 2800 was a 335 done up in Blue Mine Metallic. This thing certainly caught my eye when I saw the updates this week. Beautiful dark blue sparkle finish. It's got the chrome toppers to the rings, all chromed out hardware, including our knobs, even a matching headstock, and it's a full on refinish. What's not to love? And even the bass has got some appreciation this week. Sparkling Burgundy Non Reverse Thunderbird. This is a finish that is better appreciated in person than in photos, which is not a custom color, mind you. This is something that is actively offered every day for about 2200 bucks, even with the matching headstock. However, what a transformation just putting a clear pick guard on that, ruby red pickups and clear knobs. That just looked incredibly cool. 
So hey, 200 bucks off and some cool mods. It's still available if you want it. But now moving on to a 61 SGLP standard. For being a custom shop, 34 was not too bad. But this appears to be Pelham Blue that they've lightly aged. Like you can see it's turning green in certain areas, but not all of them. So it's like slowly forming to where we want it to be. And they really aged the gold hardware. And it's got the finish checking all over. Nice dark fretboard. All yellowed overhead stock has to be one of my favorite things about this one and they gave it a cream truss rod cover for some reason i mean if this is what you're looking for it's great and not too bad of a price next up we've got ombre fire haven't we already seen this one or something like so similar to it i'm not sure but it appears to have like a, a color changing effect or it's like a fade so you've got like gold right here gold at the top and then more of like an orange color here you've got dirty fingers pickups in here so it's definitely very 70s influenced and then okay you look out on the back and you can confirm what i was just seeing the gold tips with the headstock and they did a little bit of a burst job Interesting paint scheme, not my favorite, but how do you guys feel about dark metallic cherry? I feel like if you're gonna get one of these Epiphone casinos, you might as well get a cool custom color because it might become collectible in the future. And I'd say that finish looks pretty good on one of these. But ah, not a full on refinish. Although natural back and sides do look pretty cool as well with painted tops. They also had another one in graphite metallic, which will be a slightly sparkly black color, but we've got the gold Bigsby on it this time. Yeah. Gibson put those things into production. P90 pickups, black and gold, just needs a pick guard, and yeah, that's a winner. I really like the wood grain on the back of that one too. I've always liked black top guitars, but then that one tuner is just a slightly different shade than everything else. Confirmed by multiple camera angles. <laughs> that bugged me. And then the four that weren't really that exciting, you had a studio that had the P94 pickup on it. There was a 335 figured all blacked out. A natural satin Les Paul Classic at a $100 premium with kind of a really long mineral deposit right there, but a decently figured back. And then a Custom Shop 64 reissue. It's got some interesting figuring to it, though not what I would spend five grand on. But hey, I don't know, it looks a little bit better on the back. It is fascinating wood grain. You don't see it like that every day, but still, 5,000, you can buy a lot of guitars with that. So that's the mod collection. Which one do you think I bought? Leave your guess in the comments section. Now let's head on over to the US demo shop. I'll be honest, uh, not too much. They had a whole bunch of acoustics going on. They had a, a lot of SGs this week too. It's mainly players grade stuff. However, they had a strange phenomenon this week of charging strange shipping prices. So like right here, $8 shipping which auto-corrects to free shipping because they automatically have their shop set up if anything's over $50, it gets shipped for free. But then this guy was $15 shipping. Here was one for four and an SG for two. <laughs> I thought Gibson was gonna start to go the, hey, we're only gonna charge you 15 to $20 for shipping because you know that it's gonna actually cost you more. I know Dave's Guitar Shop is a place that does that. But most people just think, well, what's 20 bucks? I, I know it at least costs him about 60 to 80 bucks to get it to me, so I'm not going to complain about it. But as far as interesting offerings, there was a Les Paul Classic with what I would just randomly describe as ladder wood grain. Like there's one ladder here, one ladder there, another one right here where you can just climb up the rungs of the ladder because, you know, I think you get the idea. The back was all right. The standard 60s offered at 2400 that's one of those tops that's going to look awesome in person. It photographs pretty well too, but that's nice and wide flame. But that's not why I'm sharing this one with you guys. I'm sharing this one because of a very hilarious mishap here. No, it's not the scratches. It's this. <laughs> what, what happened to our router jig right here, guys? I mean, that's almost twice the size it needs to be. That, that's kind of funny. I'm wondering if somebody like accidentally bumped the body while the machine was working on that one. I mean, it is one of the AAA tops. They're technically giving you like a five to $600 discount. So I mean, is it worth it? I don't know, weigh your options on that. The G45, I wanted to talk about this one because these are painfully plain looking guitars. That's why I never ended up reviewing it. I get it, it's the whole USA made, not a screwed on neck acoustic for a thousand bucks, but it just never really called me to want to play it. Like at least do an age natural finish, right? But where the characteristics of these actually shine through is at the back. Some of them, you can find some really interesting wood grains in the walnut. I'm not gonna say this is the craziest one I've ever seen, but it's got some figuring, it's got some wood grain, doesn't quite necessarily 100% line up in the center there, but hey, it is what it is. There was a 59-335 reissue in double gold. The DG finish always looks pretty cool. 
We quickly talked about this one before, but 1400 for something that looks like this? Changing up the plastics on SGs makes them look so different going from black to white. This now looks like a fun pop guitar. Kind of gives me Captain Kirk Douglas SG vibes as well with the white perloid. But I want to know, how the heck did that happen? Ding, ding, ding. Gouge. Like, we don't normally see such extravagant wear on the USA demo shop stuff. There's another Trini Lopez, this time Annalyn died for 52. And then this Les Paul Classic with an incredibly ugly top. Now, ugly is subjective, but I'm saying on the grand scheme of things, if I saw this versus one that had a more natural wood grain, I'd probably pick a different one because, I mean, it's like it's got some bird's eye figuring, but it doesn't. Like, it's a freckled beast. Like, at the same time, if somebody steals your guitar, you're gonna know it because how many other tops have you seen that have been freckled like that? I suppose if I ordered one of these things blind and I was just expecting a plain top in general, I'd probably actually be pretty excited to get a top like that because these look more like traditional bird's eye. So maybe there's some really cool chatoyants going on with this one that the photos don't describe. Or bugs were eating that top. <laughs> As far as the sold listings, look at this thing. Had I not known any better, I would say that's a mint condition Norlin era Les Paul custom. But then I'd be like, ah, two-piece maple top, of course it can't be Norlin era. But I would nickname this one like the Scream or something, because you know, you got like upside down eyes going on here and he's going, ah! But then as I kept scrolling through here, I got shocked again. Custom truss rod cover, that's not why I'm shocked, it's this. I think it's from 2016, we're starting to break into the old, old stock. It probably got left in there because some sort of an impression line right there. That doesn't look like a crack or a seam separation, so it just must be some sort of a impression line because you got it on the back here, so maybe this was loaned out to a Gibson artist and he played it for a couple of years. Because you gotta remember, you click on this thing and it used to say artist played and I always thought that'd be slash played this guitar for 10 minutes, give us 10 grand. But sometimes Gibson does just loan out guitars and they eventually get them back. They're not always gifts. And then perhaps one of my favorite factory goofs we've seen this week. We got a Silver Burst Les Paul Custom. Why they put gold knobs on that, I'll never know, but hey, whatever. But this thing sold really fast, and I'm curious if the buyer even realized this. I mean, this is one of those versions that has the super silvered on the back. I'm not a big fan of that, but hey, it's each their own, but... <laughs> Do you happen to see what is wrong here? Take a straight edge and... Oops. <laughs> That's why it's in the demo shop, because somebody messed up at the very end. Now, could you potentially fill that and move it and make it look good? Maybe. It might barely show, so you might have to do some finish touch-up work, too. Or you can just leave it and appreciate it for its quirky nature. And then, hey, there's a 54 reissue in the demo shop this week. All gold. And to wrap up our episode, we'll take a quick trip to the European demo shop. Nothing much here. Honestly, I was struggling to even show you this one. It had an okay top, 2,000 bucks, including everything. There's a 57 reissue with the Bolivian Rosewood fretboard, this time a proper gold top with the natural back and sides. And then, okay, there was one interesting one this week. The European demo shop doesn't always modify their instruments. So it's kind of cool to see one with the P94 pickups, which means, yeah, these guys have P94 pickups stock somewhere. And then what on earth is that? Our pickup cover reads, Swingster, which I think is an Epiphone model, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so I'm confused how that cover would fit on a USA pickup. Yeah, they say it's a Burst Bucker Pro, so who knows, maybe the spacing is the same. And it's got some wood grain going on. It was worthy of talking about. All right, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I know I did. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.